worship tonight. Lots of great stuff. Today we celebrate Pentecost, the Holy Spirit coming down and creating eternal meaning in our temporary confused lives, right? Our words would be meaningless without God's power, without his flame, without his Holy Spirit. And that's what we get to talk about, think about tonight. The moon and stars, they wept. The morning sun was dead. The Savior of the world was fallen. His body on the cross, his blood poured out for us. The weight of every curse upon him. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, we've got a little music playing because we would like you to do something prayerfully for us now. 
and we can have a little music while we're doing it. We would like you to take a survey for us. You say, what, another survey? It's that time of year. We're doing our planning next week. We want to get some ideas, some response, and a few things. It's very quick. Uh, you can take it uh, on the yellow sheet, and we'll come up and collect it. Or you can um, take it on your phone, I guess, with the QR code. So would you please at this time uh, do that? It'd be very quick. Please do it for us. have folks that will collect that at this time if not we can drop it off during the offering why don't we do that when we do the offering we will also please if you have the sheet you can at that time place it in the offering plate along with the offering tomorrow at three o'clock we have the great privilege of uh, participating in an ordination and installation here at Holy Cross. It would be a wonderful thing if we were a full sanctuary, and uh, we'd like you to come and be part of that. By the way, the Harrington family is here this evening. Where are they? Right there. So I think what we'll do is when we're done with the sermon, I think we're going to pray for these folks, kind of like we used to do, Pastor Marino, you know, with, um, with mission folks, because we're sending them on a mission. And so we'll have them come to the center of the aisle right at the end of my sermon. And I'll ask you just please to come into the center aisle and place your hand either on them or on someone behind them as we, um, as we pray for them. Uh, just as we're talking about some things, golly, in addition to the uh, Harringtons, uh, we've got our, our guest um, um, Bernice Bunkowski. It's so good to have you with us, Bernice. Her husband was really a, a, a leading missiologist of our church body, served in Africa, and served out the seminary, then up at uh, Concordia St. Paul, and her son, Walt. They've got a daughter, granddaughter, who has graduated. And I'm sorry, I was gonna send you a text, a Bill and Nancy. I saw on Facebook, you are grandparents, is that right? Congratulations, and I think, uh, it was like a throwback name. It was Esther, wasn't it? Was that the name? I love that. There's a biblical reason why, why their daughter and son-in-law chose that name. And I just like it because it's biblical as well as, like I say, kind of a throwback name. I love uh, Esther, you know, that's so cool. So congratulations. And um, you're all special. It's good to see you all here. Let's rise now to continue worshiping our God. And we'll do so calling upon his great name, worshiping him in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, 
have tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone in your presence Lord Holy Spirit Holy Spirit, you along with the Father and the Son, love us, care for us, are with us each and every day of our lives, and as we have just sung, pursue us, leave the 99 to go after us. And yet we confess, O Holy Spirit, on this, the weekend of Pentecost, that we don't always acknowledge you, indeed we grieve you. When we demand our answers, our solutions right now and fail to see your presence and purpose, your activity in our lives, Lord, this evening, as we reflect upon the precious gift of the Holy Spirit, we confess our sinfulness and need of his cleansing and ask that you forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name amen the gift of the holy spirit what happens is everything christ is one for us on calvary's cross the spirit gives us that those gifts we hear the word this evening the gospel we've begun with our baptism in the name of the father son and holy spirit we will receive the gifts of god in the precious supper of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Spirit gives us all that, and then the Spirit draws us back to that same cross and that forgiveness. Because of that, the power of the Spirit, the authority and power of the cross and empty tomb of Jesus Christ, I can proclaim to you the forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of You may be seated. Although there is no kid wise today, we'd like to take a moment to pray a special prayer of blessing on our children. Heavenly Father, on this day in which we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost, we give you thanks that in the baptism of our children that the Holy Spirit was poured out on them abundantly. We ask, Lord, that for all the days of their life, they might be amazed by the wonder of God. 
and that they would be empowered by your spirit to keep your words that you have given to them and to us. And even though our resurrected Savior is no longer visible to us and has gone away for a time, that at all times, whether that be of joy or suffering, that they would call on the name of the Lord with confidence, looking expectantly to Jesus coming again. And we pray this in our risen Savior's name. Amen. Our first reading this evening is from Acts chapter 2, and we will read it together in that I will read the narrator sections along with the words of Peter and his sermon from the prophet Joel, and you will read most of the parts that are the crowds gathered in Jerusalem on that Pentecost day. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven, And at this sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, These who are speaking Galileans, and how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, But others, mocking, said, But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced because I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, 
so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Our sermon hymn tonight is a Pentecost hymn from a Spanish tradition, so it may feel a little different, but that's perfect on a day like Pentecost. We're going to introduce the melody with Josh on the trombone. I think that merits a praise offering to God, don't you think so? That was pretty cool. Oh, we can do a little better than that, my word, yeah. God be praised. Thank you so much. Tabas, I'm always amazed at what you and your entourage come up with. Thank you for, thank you all for being here and helping with this. God be praised. Well, grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Yesterday evening, went down to what we call the compound down on the Bluffton Road where my son Sam lives, and he's got about four acres there, and he's got a golf cart and a bouncy house, and we're just running around, always acting crazy down there. But we were having a little bit of a belated birthday celebration for our son Ben, and... Um, 35th birthday, and um, I was expecting hamburgers. In fact, that's what Janet brought along, and, and um, all of a sudden, the aluminum foil was lifted, 
And there was this marinated mahi mahi. Oh, yeah, I was living large last night, let me tell you. In fact, I had to look up in the dictionary how to pronounce mahi mahi. I thought it was just tuna, you know. But um, at any rate, there's something about marination, isn't there? When something is marinated, there's a time that's invested in that, and it makes it really, really something special. The thing is, though, you know, we live in a microwave era, don't we? In a microwave time. In fact, I think I've told you before that I knew that I had become a microwave kind of guy when once I popped a hot dog into the microwave and was drumming my fingers just waiting for that 20 seconds to go by until I could get the hot dog out. I mean, that's how instant gratification we have become. And it's one thing to zap food. It's another thing to zap our relationships. And that's what's going on today. In fact, one of the reasons I think we're so polarized as a people is there is very little reflection and a whole lot of uh, venting our spleens and rather quick reaction to things. Look at all these different kinds of media channels within um, social media that we have to keep up with. And I guess what I'd like us to think about this evening is in a microwave world and on a Pentecost weekend, I would like us to recognize and to celebrate the marinating power of the Holy Spirit. Let's bow our heads and pray. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, yep, we'd like to zap it and have our growth, have our relationships, have it all there. But Lord, in a sin-broken world, it doesn't work that way. We thank you for the marinating power of the Holy Spirit and ask that you bless us in our reflection and our worship this evening as to you belongs all power and glory and dominion. In the name of your Son, Jesus, and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We heard two accounts of the Holy Spirit this evening. The first one from the book of Acts is the pretty classic one. That's the one uh, written by Luke. I don't know if you know that or not. Trivia question, who's written most of the New Testament? It's Luke. He wrote the Gospel of Luke. Then he wrote the book of Acts. And there it talks about the first Pentecost. But if you go to the Gospel of John... And if you go to John chapters 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17, we have Jesus in the upper room on the night when he was betrayed. And in fact, I think it's fascinating that out of the, um, oh, I don't know, 33-some years that Jesus was on this earth, that the Gospels, at least the Gospel of John, devotes about 40% of it to the last 43 days of his earthly walk, starting with Monday, Thursday, all the way to the day of ascension. So here's Jesus in the upper room. He's going to be dead in less than 24 hours. And uh, he's giving some really last-minute instructions to his disciples. And in John chapter 14, 15 and 16, the middle three of those five chapters, he says quite a bit about the Holy Spirit. And I am drawn in particular to these words, which our vicar Jake read for us just a few moments ago. And I'd like us to read them together now so that we might again reflect upon them. These are words of Jesus. And let us read together. But the helper the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Okay, he will teach you all things and he will bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. I made allusion to this in the confession of sins in my absolution, 
my forgiveness that I pronounce, God's forgiveness. And it's amazing that it all flows from the cross. And we don't know the Holy Spirit apart from the cross of Jesus Christ because that's the Holy Spirit's job. The Holy Spirit is to take those marvelous gifts that Christ has earned for us through his death and then through his resurrection, and then he just richly distributes them to us. In fact, I think that's one of the coolest things about worship is we're just, as you sang in the song about Holy Spirit, your presence here, we bathe in the presence and in the power of the Holy Spirit. We speak words that are Holy Spirit-inspired words. We sing those words we listen to those words. We remember our baptism in which the Holy Spirit brought that death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. For many of us, we weren't even yet conscious of it, but it was a gift that was given to us, just as we can give gifts to little children now who may not even be aware who the giver is or what the gift is, but as they grow, learn more and more about that. So baptism, we celebrate that, remembering in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And as I also mentioned in a few moments, we'll receive Christ's very body and blood given and shed for the forgiveness of sins. You came to church this evening in some kind of a vehicle, a mode of transportation, a means of transportation. The gifts that I've just mentioned, the word baptism and Holy Communion are the means by which the Holy Spirit transports all that Jesus has done for us. He will bring to your remembrance all things that he has said. How does that go again? He will teach you all things, bring to your remembrance all that I, that is Jesus, have said to you. And within 30 years of Jesus saying those words, that is exactly what happened. In fact, uh, scholars debate the dates, but let's say that Jesus died, oh, in about 30 uh, A.D., somewhere around there. By the way, I'm going to be really nervous because Pastor Dan is like a New Testament scholar. So all that stuff you kind of nod and agree with me on, he knows it really well, okay? So it's going to up my game a little bit here. But at any rate, in about, um, uh, within about oh, anywhere, scholars guess 10 to 20 years after that, uh, all the way up till 80 or 90 A.D., within about a 50-year period of time, these folks, and these just represent some of them, you see John Mark in the lower left, remember in the, how he in the garden of, of Gethsemane, how he runs and they, he leaves his cloak there. A soldier tries to grab him and he runs off naked into the night. Luke, the physician, probably down there at the lower right. Different writers whom the Holy Spirit inspired, bringing to them the remembrance of the things of Jesus so that they might write them down for us. I mean, when we say this is the word of the Lord, I know because we kind of do it every week, it can become routinized. This is the word of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. I think we need to recapture a little bit of the wonder of that. I'll never forget back when I first began to learn how to read. Today they learn in preschool. I was in the first grade, but I can remember when then what they did was our teacher began to give us pieces of the Bible to read. And I thought, man, I'm reading the very words that Jesus spoke. This is the word of the Lord. And bringing it to their remembrance so that they might write those things, says in the Bible, holy men of God spoke, they wrote as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Well, guess what? It's brought to our remembrance as well says in the Psalms, thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a, a light unto my path. What Jesus has done for us, what was brought into remembrance of those New Testament writers, we get to read about it, and it's brought to our remembrance as well. What, do I need to remember this? I know this stuff, I've learned that stuff. 
By the way, I tell you, that's the thing that drives me the most nuts in, in parochial schools. They have a little kid say, I already know that story, you know, and they, they're already aware of all this. And I'll tell you why. And it goes back to marinating. I haven't forgotten about marinating. We're going to get back to that. In our baptism, when we first encountered the living God and we were melded into the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we were launched on a lifelong journey of growing, of learning more about our Lord Jesus Christ. And the thing is, and I, I got to tell you, and I'm going to show you another slide here in a moment that talks about this. There are many schools of kind of psychology or personality or whatever that says, you know, you're, what you are is kind of fixed from an early age. And I don't think that's biblical, nor is it particularly realistic. Certainly we have propensities or ways that we kind of act out as our lives go on. Believe it or not, I was a little show-off back when I was in the sandbox. You know, I'd stand up on the edge of that and talk to the other kids. But what happens is we go through different times of our lives. And the story that I say, I know that story... It means one thing to us when we're a little child and the biggest challenge we're facing right then is how am I going to learn how to tie my shoes to what it learns, what it means to me when I become an adolescent and I'm thinking, oh man, this stinks, you know, I've got acne, you know, and my body's changing and all this stuff and I don't know what to do with all this. To when I move on and golly, what am I going to do with my life? I'm going to move on to college. And then I move on, who am I going to do it with? And I finally say, you know, of all the people out there in the universe, I want you to be the one, if you will consent, to be my bride, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death do us part. And then you'd think you'd have it figured out then, but welcome to the real world, right? As you continue to grow and change in your lives, then you face something like cancer or you face something like a financial difficulty or upset or the death of a spouse or just all the stuff that can happen in a sin-broken world. Same Bible story, but it means something different to you. Same Savior, same salvation by grace through faith, nothing we can do but how it plays out in our lives is a lot different when you're 68 than when you're 8 years old. We grow. We change. In fact, there's a psychologist, was, I think he's passed, his name is Eric Erickson, he talks about the psychosocial uh, stages of human development. And this is too little for you to see, but I've always been intrigued by this. Starts from infancy, that's over there at about 9 o'clock. And um, uh, talks about trust. For, it's always you're kind of going between two poles, trust versus mistrust. It's kind of fun. And the one that I have really noticed in my ministry, if you go all the way around the circle to maturity, if you can see that, it's about at eight, oh, at, at a, between eight and nine. See it there? Oh, I wish I had something I could point with. But at any rate, it's uh, maturity. Integrity versus despair. I can tell you, having walked with a lot of people when they move from this life to the life to come, I have run into people who die, and they die in despair. I mean, they're going to go to heaven. They know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But they just feel so unfulfilled. I didn't do this. I didn't accomplish this. I should have done this. Why did this happen? And the other one is integrity. Through it all, the blows, the difficulties, the ups and downs. You know, God, it's kind of like Jimmy Buffett said, some of it magic, some of it tragic, but I've had a great life all the way. You know? Those are the stages we go through. And we have the marinating power of the Holy Spirit who is with us through all those different stages, maturing us shaping us, not always giving us what we want in life, 
but giving us what we need. I think of some of our hymns that talk about that. Oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. The song in Christ alone, I love the line that says, from life's first breath to final cry, Jesus commands my destiny. It's a process. It's the marinating power of God continuing to work in our lives. Uh, this past uh, week, a week or so ago, our eighth graders graduated. And I try to remember, Jake, was this the opening or the closing hymn, Christ Be My Leader? Trying to remember, we either went in or came in or went out on it, but I thought it was so good. Christ be my leader, you know that song. And look at the line that says, Christ be my teacher in age as in youth. We are really continually learning, continually growing in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. There's a song called 10,000 Reasons. We sing it quite a bit. 10,000 reasons. Bum, 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 bum. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. But there's a line in there, whatever may pass, whatever's come, and whatever lies before me. How is it that we subject ourselves to the marinating power of the Holy Spirit, who through the writers has, brings to our remembrance what Christ has done and who points us back to the cross as the source from which all of this comes? How do we do that? One thing we're doing is exactly what we're doing tonight. We worship. We sing scripture. We pray together. We gather to encourage and challenge one another. This is part of growing. Another thing is that we have done as a congregation is we've talked about joining Jesus on his mission. And I've done this with you before, but I think it's something that would bear repeating because it's um, a reminder, I think, of the discipline of growing each and every day. Wouldn't it be great if we got up in the morning and what we did was this. These are the five mission questions. You don't have to say them exactly the way they are there. But some of you might remember, I think I got a pretty cool way of remembering them. All right, I go like this. God, how do I see you at work in my life? Like this, God, what are you saying to me in your word? Like this, what kind of conversations am I having with people who are not Christian? We're not a ghetto here who we just kind of cling to ourselves. We are called and sent to make a Christ-like difference in the world. So it's like this, like this, like this. What good can we do around here? Service. And then finally, how can I pray for you? Now, I know you're old and too cute, uh, cool to do this. Maybe some of you are too cute to do it too. I don't know. But at any rate, let's try these things. Okay, you can do it. You got permission. I'm the only one that will see you. And I'll chuckle to myself. Don't worry. But let's start with this. First of all, how do we see God at work in our lives? What is God saying to me in his word? What conversations am I having with people who don't know Christ? Pre-Christians, Greg Finke calls them. What good can I do around here? How can I make that, just that winsome presence of Christ known in the world? And this one, how can I pray for you? I would encourage you that if you did one of those, ask yourself that question beginning the day or at the end of the day, I would suspect that the Holy Spirit's marinating power would just continue to work in your heart and life, tenderizing you to be a fit instrument for our God. You know, that's what life is. I had a former district president, just a wonderful man, who sometimes when we'd be facing a difficult problem, he'd say to me, Tom, I think we need to marinate. Let's, let's let that marinate a little bit. There's a lot of things in life like that. We can't solve them just like that. But you know, we can listen. 
We can reflect on what the Spirit is speaking and saying to us, how the Spirit is bringing Christ into this situation. And we can recognize that God, who has begun a good work in us, will continue to marinate us until he brings it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's a time of uh, marination for Holy Cross Lutheran Church. Mark Lang is going to be retiring in August. And we really thought about what could we do in replacing that position because one thing that Mark does is he brings a real Christ-centered heart into things. And somebody, it might have been Mark himself, said maybe we ought to consider a pastor in that position. And what we could do is we could kind of divvy up some other tasks among other folks in our office and we could free that person to do Mark's essential duties and also to uh, do additional pastoral duties. Which brings us to this young man over here. And so what I'd like to do as we're marinating as a congregation, the Holy Spirit's working something in us, is to invite the Harringtons to come to the center aisle That's Pastor Dan, pastor-elect as of tomorrow. His wife, Melissa, their youngest daughter, Katie, their son, Caleb, tells the best jokes, you know it. Their daughter, Lily, and their son, Alex. If you'd come to the center here, and we're going to do what we haven't done in a while. We're going to stand up and lay hands on these folks. If you can't get right next to them, Just put the hand on someone behind and let's ask for God's marinating presence in their lives. And believe me, it has been in their lives and also through their lives. We bow our heads to pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit, You have called us to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Give us faith to go out now in good faith, not knowing where we go always, but knowing that your hand is leading us, your love is supporting us. Marinate us, Lord, and use this, your servant Dan, and his beautiful family as part of that plan. Bless them and through them be a blessing to us as we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. Let's all stand now and make confession of our Christian faith and use the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory, to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. The dollars you give to this ministry are used right here at 3425 Crescent Avenue and go literally around the world.
God bless you and the Christ-like difference you make as we now worship him with our tithes and offerings and also sing. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us we pray. Each petition of the prayers this evening will conclude with, Lord, in your mercy, please reply by saying, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, your spirit fills the world and gladdens your church with the remembrance of all Christ Jesus has spoken. Comfort us with divine peace and do not let our hearts be troubled or afraid. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, as you once chose apostles to proclaim the resurrection, so open the mouths of your pastors and people to declare his praises to all who will hear. We pray especially for our newest pastor here at Holy Cross, Pastor Harrington. May you be with him and his ministry and also his family and this congregation as we support him. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, sustain those who are mocked for believing and confessing the truth of your word, that they may remain faithful to you. Lord, in your mercy. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, you have poured out your spirit upon us, that we might believe your truth and raise our sons and our daughters in it. Bless all parents, that they may faithfully catechize their children in your word. 
We thank you especially, Lord, on this day for the Bites family, as this week they will be celebrating an anniversary and the work that you have done through that family. We also rejoice with the gift of life and Bob Scheiman and the birthday that he will celebrate this week and all of the things that you have done through him in his ministry here at Holy Cross. Lord, in your mercy, Lord of might, preserve your people from their enemies, bring peace to the nations, and prosper the cause of life. Bless our leaders, especially our president, governor, congress, legislature, and all judges. Give them a relentless pursuit of just laws for the common good of all people, with a heart of mercy for the weak and vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of compassion, forget not the sick and the suffering. Grant them healing according to your will. Especially do we name before you Jill and Josh, Rick, Adam, Linda, Joanne, Donna, Don, Laura, Luann, Lindsay, Sarah, Ginny, Ronald, Roxanne, Dick, Mary, Mary, Pete, and Joan. Give them confidence that you know their needs and will well supply them with all they need to endure to the day of your coming when all affliction will end and you will grant the perfect consummation to us and to all who have loved your appearing. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of grace, your Son has come among us and given us the privilege of a place at his table. Prepare us to receive his body and blood with repentance and faith for our good and for the flowering in our lives of your holiness and righteousness. Nourish and feed us that in this holy communion we may be strengthened for your service. Lord, in your mercy. Finally, Almighty Father, with your Son, Jesus Christ, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts through your word to rule and govern us according to your will. Comfort us in every temptation and misfortune and defend us against every error that we may continue steadfast in the faith, increase in love and good works, and trusting firmly in your grace for us by his death, obtain eternal salvation. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please rise. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, All of you drink of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. These, my brothers and sisters in Christ, are gifts of the Holy Spirit, the very body and blood of our Savior Jesus, and the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Have you? 
This precious gift, the very body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and keep you in true faith and the life everlasting. Go in peace, serve the Lord with gladness. Amen. My encouragement to you as we depart is this. Remember the marinating power of the Holy Spirit in your life, bringing you to remembrance of all that Christ has done and continues to do for you from life's first cry to final breath. Receive now the blessing of our God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For He is good, He is above all things. 
His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, His love endures forever. For the life that's been reborn, His love endures forever. Build your king. 